About 6,000 years ago, Mesopotamia was one of the cradles of civilization and the birthplace of the first writing system. In the fertile valley between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, the earliest cities arose. Among them was the city Uruk. The city was associated with the sky god Anu, the chief deity of the Sumerians, and near the center of the city, the inhabitants built a temple, which towered above the fortification wall. My name's Kaylee, and today we're going to look into the Anu Ziggurat in one of the oldest cities on Earth, Uruk. Situated in the modern city of Warka in Iraq, Uruk was clearly one of the most important places in southern Mesopotamia. It's one of the first cities in the world and was populated without interruption for almost 5,000 years. In the western area of the city center, a multiple-faced terrace was discovered, the Anu Ziggurat of Uruk, which was the greatest monument of the city. A ziggurat is a raised platform or terrace with four sloping sides looking somewhat like a chopped off pyramid. Ziggurats are made of mud bricks, just like the Egyptian mastabas I spoke about in the Step Pyramid of Djoser video. Stone was rare in Mesopotamia, so it wasn't used much as construction material. Ziggurats were not only a visual focal point of the city, but they were symbolic as well. Seeing a ziggurat towering above the rest of the city, one would make the visual connection to the god or goddess honored there and recognize the deity's political authority. The ziggurats were at the heart of the theocratic political system. A theocracy is a type of government where a god is recognized as ruler and the state officials operate on the god's behalf. The purpose of a ziggurat itself is to get the temple that is constructed at the top closer to the heavens. The Mesopotamians believed that the ziggurats connected heaven and earth. The Anu Ziggurat was constructed in the Great Anu district in the city. Few remains of writing have been found there. The Ziggurat is a single massive terrace. This terrace has been extended and raised more than 10 times, until it reached its final height of approximately 12 meters. The sides of the Ziggurat were broad and sloping, broken up by recessed bands from top to bottom, as you can see here in the digital reconstruction. The only way to get to the top of the ziggurat was a steep stairway that led to a ramp that wrapped around the north end of the ziggurat. From there you could go two ways, straight ahead on a steeper stairway or walking along the ramp towards the entrance of the white temple. The shape is polygonal due to the many reconfigurations and the staircase. The surface area of the top of the terrace measured approximately 45 by 50 meters. The ziggurat is radiocarbon dated to have been constructed between 4000 BCE and 3500 BCE. The surface of the top was coated with bitumen, a tar or pitch-like material, similar to what is used for road paving in modern times. The bitumen was overlaid with brick, which functioned as a firm and waterproof foundation for the building on top of the ziggurat, called the White Temple, which was built as a dedication to the sky god Anu. Anu was the divine personification of the sky, the supreme god and ancestor of all the deities in ancient Mesopotamian religion. He was the supreme source of all authority, for both the mortal rulers and the other gods. In one text he is described as the one who contains the entire universe. The temple got its name from the fact that it was entirely whitewashed from the inside and outside, giving it an unparalleled brightness in strong sunlight much like the pyramids of Giza would a thousand years later. The White Temple was rectangular in shape, measuring 17.5 by 22.3 meters, and each corner was oriented to a cardinal point. The temple's white plastered walls were divided by niches, multiple pedestals and multiple staircases, which led to the roof and a probable second floor. It's a typical Uruk High Temple with a three parts plan, also known as a tripartite plan, a long rectangular central hall with rooms on either side. The White Temple had three separate entrances, none of which faced the ziggurat's ramp directly. Visitors would have needed to walk around the temple, being in awe of the grand and bright facade and the powerful views. They most likely gained access to the temple in a bent axis approach, where one would have to turn 90 degrees to face the altar, which was a typical arrangement in ancient Near Eastern temples. The north, west and east corner chambers of the building contained staircases. In the north chamber, the staircase was unfinished. The north end of the central hall had a podium accessible by a small staircase, and an altar with a surface which had fire stains. 
The White Temple has been radiocarbon dated to have been constructed between 3517 BCE and 3358 BCE. There were very few finds inside the White Temple. Archaeologists uncovered 19 tablets of gypsum on the floor of the temple. All of them had cylinder seal impressions and looked like they were used for temple accounting. They uncovered a foundation deposit of leopard and lion bones in the eastern corner of the temple as well. Ritually buried objects and bones were not uncommon in ancient architecture. These buried bones were most likely part of a foundation ceremony, which was held before construction of the temple took place. To the north of the White Temple was a broad flat terrace. At the center of this terrace, archaeologists found a huge pit with traces of fire of approximately 2.2 by 2.7 meters. But more interestingly, they discovered a system of shallow bitumen coated conduits which ran from the southeast and southwest terrace edges and entered the temple through the southeast and southwest doors. Archaeologists believe that liquids like water would have flowed from the terrace all the way inside the temple to collect in a pit in the center hall of the temple. Under the northwest edge of the base of the ziggurat, archaeologists discovered an older structure named the Stone Temple. The Stone Temple was built from limestone and bitumen on a podium of rammed earth and plastered with lime mortar. The Stone Temple was eventually ritually destroyed and covered with layers of clay, reed and stone and was later excavated and filled with mortar before the Anu ziggurat was built on top of it. The excavators of the White Temple estimate that it would have taken 1500 people working an average of 10 hours a day for 5 years to have built the stone facing of the massive surface area on top of the ziggurat on which the White Temple eventually was built. Religious belief may have inspired participation in constructing such a massive project. However, there is no doubt that any form of forced labor or slave labor was involved in construction as well. The sky god Anu was, as previously mentioned, the ancestor of the Anunnaki, who were the major deities in Sumerian religion. The primary center of the Anunnaki religious following was the Iyana district of Uruk. This district was younger than the Anu district, but it was historically significant as both writing and monumental public architecture emerged here. The combination of these two developments place Iana as arguably the first true city and civilization in human history. The first examples of cuneiform writing was found in the Iana district. Uruk was not only one of the first cities, it was the main force of urbanization and state formation as well. For 800 years between 4000 BCE and 3200 BCE, the area saw a shift from small agricultural villages to a larger urban city center with a full-time bureaucracy, military and society. The Uruk period culture expanded by Sumerian traders and colonists and had an effect on all surrounding peoples who gradually evolved their own comparable competing economies and cultures. Around 3100 BCE, Uruk reached its peak growth with approximately 40,000 residents living inside the city walls. The legendary king Gilgamesh ruled Uruk in the 27th century BCE. He was posthumously deified and he became a major figure in Sumerian legend during the Akkadian rule. Gilgamesh was a major hero in ancient Mesopotamian mythology and the protagonist of the Epic of Gilgamesh, an epic poem written in Akkadian during the late 2nd millennium BCE. Around 2334 BCE, the Akkadian Empire slowly took over the Sumerian civilization, eventually uniting both civilizations under Akkadian rule. After Uruk was annexed to the Akkadian Empire, it went into decline. The Akkadian Empire was followed by the very short-lived Babylonian Empire. The city of Uruk lost its importance in the area around 2000 BCE during the struggles of the Babylonian Empire against the Elamites. The Elamite Empire parallels Sumerian history. It was part of the early urbanization and its written records are only slightly younger than those found in Sumer. Uruk remained inhabited until it was finally abandoned around the time of the Arabic conquest of Iran between 633 and 638 AD. In 1849, the British geologist, naturalist, explorer and archaeologist named William Kenneth Loftus 
discovered the ancient Sumerian city of Uruk. He led the first excavations in 1850 and 1854. He is credited with the discovery of the famous clay cone wall and some tablets written in cuneiform script in Uruk. Among some of the artifacts found in later excavations in Warka or Uruk is the Mask of Warka, also known as the Lady of Uruk or the Sumerian Mona Lisa. Dating from 3100 BCE, it's one of the earliest depictions of a human face. The carved marble female face is most likely a depiction of the goddess Inanna. During the fall of Baghdad in April 2003, the mask was looted from the Iraq Museum. Thankfully, in September 2003, the mask was recovered and returned to the museum. And by that information, you've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click the bell icon for notifications every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the link in the description down below. I also want to thank my Patreons Richard, Barry and NGC6543. Support me on Patreon in the future so I can make more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.